Olá, meus amigos. Hello, my friends. Deus abençoe a vocês. God bless all of you. And the blessing which I want, ask and supplicate to him is not to meet your basic needs. No. Besides that, you need infinitely more than the daily bread. Because the life of a man, a person, is not in the goods which they possess, in the things which they possess. So the blessing which I want you to have is the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of discernment, the spirit of fear towards God. I want the Holy Spirit to come and involve you, to dwell in you, and to use your mind, your heart, your body, that the image of His Son Jesus may be reflected in your life. Is this difficult? No, it's not difficult. But we make it difficult when we want to fulfill our dreams. We want to impose God to our fulfillments. Imagine you. Pay attention. Close attention. You are that intelligent person. You think. You reason. You weigh. You know how to evaluate, for example, your body. You know how to evaluate if you are gaining weight, if you're losing weight. You know how to evaluate if you're physically well or not. When you feel any problem, any type of problem of pain, even if it's a toothache, or a problem in your muscles, the one who suffers in truth is your soul which suffers. Your soul feels that pain. When we suffer pains in our body, the physical body, he, it in truth reflects the pains, the suffering of our soul, our soul is what is suffering. But it's in the body where it appears, where pain is showed. So Jesus came to save what? The body, our body, your body? No. Our body will deteriorate. It will wither in the grave. It will return to dust, our body. Now think with me, how many are the people who live in this world in the function of their body, the beauty of their body, the aesthetic of their body, of the hair, the eyes, their lips, the aesthetic of the plastic surgeries, you change here, remove here, you put a bit more there. So people care of the body, the flesh, which will become dust. When this body dies, no one wants to be with it, yes or no? When the soul detaches from our body, no one wants to remain with our body, no one. Not even the person who loves us the most. No, they want to bury it, of course. And they need to do that. Because it will just turn into maggots. It will return to dust, it will deteriorate. So God did not come in the person of the Lord Jesus. God did not come to the world to save or try to save the body, the flesh, the physical body. 
He came to save our soul. But what happens? Unfortunately, and due to the ignorance, the stupidity of humanity, mankind only thinks of his body, only thinks of his body. And when they look before the mirror, they want to see if everything is well. If something is missing, if there's too much of something, isn't it? So the body is treated with care as if it's God. But it will end. It will be buried. But not the soul. The soul does not die. The soul is eternal. The soul does not die. It remains alive, awake, the whole day. It is alive, night and day without ceasing. The body can disappear but not the soul. The soul will be alive. It will be living for all eternity. Now, the question comes, where? Where will my soul go? Where will your soul go? You need to decide. Mine, I've already decided. I've decided for my soul when I was at the age of 19 years old. I decided to put it on the altar. And from then, from that blessed and glorious day, I don't think of anything else but to preserve it on the altar. Because the devil is also not interested in our body. The devil is not interested in your body. You are beautiful, ugly. He knows that one day everything will wither. Everything will end. He is interested in your soul. What is he interested in? Why is he interested? He wants your soul to spend eternity with him in the lake of fire and brimstone. Not in hell. He's already in hell. But he wants your soul to go to hell and there in hell to make company with him there in the lake of fire and brimstone. That's what he wants. That's it. And who decides? Who decides to be the soul, your soul? Your soul will live eternity together with death, with hell, with the beast, with the false prophet, with Satan himself, joined with all of them. Even death will be in there, in the lake of fire and brimstone. And also all those whose names are not written in the book of life. So the devil wants this. He wants to add. He wants to fill the lake of fire and brimstone so that where he goes, he remains for all eternity in eternal torment. So, either you choose to live, your soul to live for all eternity with God in the new Jerusalem, or you choose decide nothing and remain as you are. You are on top of the wall. The wall belongs to the devil. The wall belongs to the devil. And you decide. The will is yours. I always ask God to give discernment, understanding, to open the understanding of people because if they don't understand this, it won't solve anything. They need to understand that the most difficult is what Jesus said to Satan. Man shall not live by bread, not just by bread, but by the word which proceeds from the mouth of God. So, pay attention, my friend. Your soul, your soul is extremely precious. It is worth more than anything which exists in the world. Nothing is more precious than your soul because it is eternal. 
they will live eternity in the lake of fire and brimstone or will live eternity in the new Jerusalem who God reserves for those who love him. Jesus said, look, he said, and because lawlessness will abound, and because lawlessness will abound, sin, mess, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. And certainly I am speaking to many people whose love has already grown cold a while ago. People who are fallen, churchless, distant, people who are bitter, people who are with grudges against the bishop, the pastor, people who say, oh, I was treated unjustly, and etc. So because of this, the love grew cold. When we speak of the love, it's not feelings, no. It's not love that love, no. It is the love which saves, the love which surrenders, the love which God loved us with. In such a way that he gave his only son, the Lord Jesus, so that all those who believe in him would not perish but have eternal life. So God loved you in such a way before you were born, before we were born. He loved us in such a way with a such big size that he let go of his only son to die and carry our sins. But then the person says, but I don't want religion. I don't want, you know, I want to live my life. I want to be free. I want to be happy. I want to fulfill my dreams. All right. You will live your dream. You know, when I was young, I was also thinking like this. My dreams, my projects, my plans, I was studying to study engineering. And I thought, I'm going to conquer this and that. I will get married, I will build a family, etc. Like the young people do. It was when Jesus said, the Holy Spirit spoke, but he spoke clearly. He spoke clearly. As I'm speaking to you, he spoke to me. Look, what profit is it to gain the whole world and lose your soul? That's it. I got a fright. Whoa, I wasn't thinking about God. I wasn't praying. I was an ordinary person. I was walking in the streets thinking of my own dreams, my own personal projects to satisfy my soul, the desires of my soul. And then the Holy Spirit revealed himself to me, inspired me, and led me to think in these words which the Lord Jesus spoke. You know when you are walking, you are doing anything, and then a thought comes. I know many thoughts come, thoughts of evil, but thoughts come, so that thought came. What profit is it to gain the whole world and lose your soul? Oh, my friend, when I heard these words, I got a fright and I started to think, to reason with wisdom, to think in the future of my soul because the future of my body I knew that sooner or later I would go down the grave as it happened with my parents, with my brothers, siblings and loved ones, they died and they disappeared. So I kept thinking, what about my soul? What profit is it to gain the whole world, Jesus said, and lose my soul? What shall a man give in exchange of his soul? What can you give in exchange of the salvation of your soul? There's only one way. 
putting your soul in the word of God, on the altar. So Jesus is saying that many, the love of many will grow cold. And it's what is happening and is happening. This is at the last days. This chapter, Matthew 24, is a prophetic chapter which Jesus speaks of the prophecies which are going to happen before His coming. And we are seeing this already. Praise God, we are getting to the end. But the truth is, the love of many has grown cold. Why? Because the devil calls the attention to the flesh, to what is perishable, than to what is eternal. The devil seeks to stimulate our appetites, sexual appetites, our vain appetites. He seeks to satisfy the appetites of the stomach, etc. He seeks to distract our flesh that we may forget the soul. Because you don't think of the soul, yes or no? Have you thought of your soul? So you don't think. You think of satisfying your physical body in fulfillment, to get married, to have a family, to have this. Yes or no? You don't think about your soul. You think more on your daily life, your future. Oh, I'm going to graduate. I'm studying. I'll graduate. I'll get money. I'll get married. I'll do this. I'll build this. I'll build a castle. However, during all your life, you kept thinking and building and personal plans, but your life is more small, more miserable, more unhappy. Why? Because your soul is weak, debilitated. Your soul is hungry because you left the first love. You left the first love. Who is Jesus? which is a pure love, which has nothing to do with feelings, but has everything to do with sacrifice. He sacrificed for us. And what do you think He wants and demands from us? Sacrifice. Those who desire to come after me, deny yourself, deny your flesh, your desires, your covetousness. Take up your cross. The cross is death. Sacrifice. When you surrender your life to Jesus, you die to this world and that is why you're baptized, buried in water and you start to live in newness of life according to the word of God. All of this feeding your soul, your spirit, your faith, pleasing God. But many because of the appeal of the flesh allow themselves to be taken and leave their souls aside because they don't see their souls. You don't see your soul as I. But when I have a stomach ache, it's the soul which feels the stomach ache. That's it. It's the soul. When we have toothaches, it's the soul which suffers the pain. Because if the body is perfect, but died, the soul detached from that body, you can use anything, but the body won't feel any pain because the soul left. So, the soul feels pain. The soul feels depression. The soul wants to die. The soul wants to kill itself. The soul is the one that is lost. The soul is the one that grew cold. Meaning, the faith grew cold. The spiritual values grew cold. They all grew cold. Jesus said, and because lawlessness will abound, lawlessness has more to do with the sin of flesh than of the spirit. When a person puts their soul on the altar of the devil, they are committing idolatry. They adore hell. They adore themselves, etc. That's it. And because lawlessness will abound, in regards to the flesh, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures until the end shall be saved. I have endured for these 57 years, 
I have in my last 57 years, I have endured. Stumbled many times I did. Fell many times I fell. But why am I standing? I am standing. Do you know why? Because the Holy Spirit was prioritized and I prioritized the receiving of the Holy Spirit. And He has guided me. And when I was fallen, and He showed me, you fell because of this. I allowed you to fall for you to learn. Not to be looking back. Not to be looking to the side. So you stumbled and fell. But I can lift you up. And He lifts up. Because there is an answer from His side towards me. And mercy towards me. So we return to Him. But when the faith grows cold, and the love as well grows cold, then the person is discouraged to speak to God, to be sincere and say, Oh my God, have mercy on me. They don't have in that willingness. They're no longer humble. They were already bound by the spirit of Satan, which is pride. The spirit of Satan is pride. He is proud. He doesn't let you go. So many people are possessed by the spirit of arrogance, of pride, which is what Lucifer did there in heaven. He became proud. And then there was no salvation without expelling him from the presence of God. God, my friend, is with his hand stretched out to you. Be humble. Put yourself in your place. You don't need to say anything to anyone. Go to your corner. See when this live video finishes. Go to your corner. The bathroom. Place where you can be with God and speak to Him. Oh my God, have mercy on me. I'm this. My love grew cold. My faith grew cold. Love and faith walk together. My love grew cold. My faith grew cold. I don't desire anything, but I know that you are merciful. I know that you are compassionate. I know that you... How many times have you raised up Bishop Macedo? You lifted him up. Do the same for me. I want to be standing, not prostrate. Have mercy on me. Speak to him, just him, no one else. Nothing else. He knows your situation already. You will see what will happen with you. You will rise again. And when you rise again, when you truthfully feel, then you will feel it. Peace in your conscious. Because you were forgiven, cleansed by the blood of the Lord Jesus, and then you are lifted up in peace. Your conscience is pure, clean, sanctified. Then your problems, problems in your working place, here and there, this will be solved. But first, you solve the main thing, which is to surrender your soul to the care of the Lord Jesus. Do this. So now we finish this live and you can do this, alright? God bless you all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.